Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today I am showing you my eyeshadow palette collection. Now I already did film the footage of me going through my drawers and up onto my shelves to show you my palettes. I show you the outsides and I show you the insides. A couple of you had asked for a palette collection where I do show the insides of the palettes just so you guys can see whether or not I'm hitting pan, I guess if I'm using shades or just see what the inside of these palettes look like. So I have all of that for you. The only thing I forgot to film previously was my single like potted shadows. So I'll do that at the very end, but I was popping in to do an intro. Don't mind the makeup. It has been on since about eight o'clock this morning and it's now six o'clock in the evening. So this has been through some rainy weather today, but definitely I have my hot cup of coffee. It is the Indiana mug today. So I am going to drink some coffee. Past me has already filmed the rest of this video. So I'm going to let other Aaron take it away. All the puppy dogs are in the room with me today but I'm gonna let other Erin take it away I am going to start with the drawer down here that has some palettes then I have my Natasha Denona palettes up on this shelf which you guys will see and then I do have a shelf above my head that you guys cannot see and that is where I have a lot of my indie shades so I'm gonna let her take it away and then I will pop back in at the end to show you guys my single potted shadows and to do an outro, but I hope that you guys enjoy seeing my eyeshadow palette collection. So we are in my one drawer of palettes. The rest of my palettes are up on my shelves that I'll show you next, but this is just how I have organized my palettes that stay in the drawer. I do have some palette organizers under here, and I'll just pull these out so you guys can see. They're just acrylic um, organizers that I ordered off of Amazon. I'll link them down below. At this time, any of the links that I have down below are not affiliated. I am a smaller channel, and so I do not have any affiliate links down there. If in the future I do have affiliated links, I'll make sure to note those in my description box, but for right now, those links are just out of the goodness of my heart. And so let's go ahead. I do have these sorted by brand. So we will just start up front and this is my Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes. This one is one of the older palettes in my collection and this is what the inside is looking. I'm trying not to blind you guys with reflective packaging and my lights, but this was a pan that palette two years ago and so as you guys can see I was able to hit pan on a bunch of shades. This shade right here is actually mixed into my hairline powder and then I'm currently using these two shades as my like eyeshadow primer setting shades and so that is how I'm using this palette. I've actually had a lot of fun reaching into this just for some mattes so far this year as well. I would love to hit pan on these two as well and have pan on every single shade in this palette. But this still works great. It still smells like peaches. And I really feel like this was the heyday of Too Faced and I kind of miss this time in the makeup kind of space where Too Faced was doing these amazing things with the peach collection. The next Too Faced palette that I have is the Italian Spritz. This is what the inside of this one is looking like. I did just get this one for Christmas, and so I've been able to use every shade in here a couple times, but definitely no pan. I think this is actually the newest palette in my collection. So this one I've been having quite a bit of fun with, making some beautiful sunset eyes. Then I have the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice. This was the original one when they still did it in the tin packaging. Again, beautiful color story. I love greens and purples and pinks together. So this one is right up my alley. I do like this palette, but I feel like Too Faced formula has kind of changed over the years where they go more for these like flaky type shades rather than the just smooth metallics that they used to have. 
and I will kind of transition into the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette. So let me open this without totally ruining my nail polish. But this one here, these are not chunky. These are smooth, beautiful metallics. I wish that they would do this formula again in some of their newer palettes because this formula was fantastic. So I love this palette. I would love to get more use on this and maybe do a pan that palette on this one one year, but this is definitely beautiful. Still smells delicious of chocolate and these shades are just amazing. So those are my four Too Faced palettes. Then I have my Pat McGrath palettes. So this is the first Bridgerton palette that came out and this is what our color story is looking like. This one always makes me ask, why did we need two shades that were so similar with the reds? But it is beautiful. This blue right here really is the showstopper in this palette. So I do love this one. I just wish that we had something a little bit different between those two reds in this one. Then the other Pat McGrath palette that I have, and I'm trying not to get you guys with my ring light, this is one of the Mothership palettes. This is the Mothership, I believe, 9, which is the Utopian Dreams, which if you know my color stories that I enjoy, I love my pinks and my purples. And so just like the blue in the Bridgerton um, palette, these special shades over here are kind of the show stoppers. So definitely I love this palette. These two over here are some of my favorite shades to reach into. I do not feel like the Pat McGrath formula and palettes is worth the money. I did purchase that at the end of 2022 when things were like 30 to 40% off on her website. So I did not pay full price for that. I don't think anybody should pay full price for a Pat McGrath Mothership palette. And I kind of feel like the hype behind these is overrated compared to some of our indie shadows. But behind that, I do have my only Huda Beauty um, palette, and that is Mercury Retrograde. I bought this on sale whenever it was being discontinued, and I'm so glad that I did. This is absolutely beautiful. These are just so stunning and impactful. Even this one here is a, no, it's this one. This one is a little bit more of a chunky type of glitter, but it just looks absolutely beautiful on the eyes. I love this palette. I love the neutrals. I love the pops in this one. I'm definitely happy to have this in my collection. Now, if you guys didn't catch my No Pan Left Behind from last year, I have touched every single shade in my collection. When we're looking into my palettes, you guys will see that every shade has been used. But this is my only Sigma palette. This is the Quarter Rosa, and I just love this color story. Again, those pinks, the purples, they get me every single time. I've been kind of disappointed with some of Sigma's formula in the past. I did declutter the Enchanted palette. It just, it underwhelmed me but these are absolutely stunning. These more impactful shades here, and even this one, and I mean this one, I'm not swatching anything, but I feel like very, very beautiful. It gives you a really good payoff, and I'm gonna wipe it on my pants because I do not have a towel by me, but definitely I love this color story. I wanna reach for this more. This would be a beautiful spring palette to pull out for my No Pan Left Behind challenge. So going in behind that, these are my Urban Decay palettes, and so I do have the Stoned Vibe palette, which again, this packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's raised up, and so it really does give that faceted look. Urban Decay has not done anything this spectacular since they did this palette, and this palette was so underrated when it first came out. So, but this is the inside of this one. I could do without the mattes. The mattes are okay, but the mattes are not great. What really shines, no pun intended, is these shimmer shades. Absolutely beautiful. They are kind of toppers, but they have so much impact and so much dimension that I really do love this palette. Again, I could do without the mattes. Sometimes I feel like the mattes don't make sense 
especially with some of these like cooler tones over here, but I still do love this palette and wish that Urban Decay would come out with something very similar to this in the future. This back here, this is my oldest Urban Decay palette, and so this is the Naked Heat. I love this color story. It just has our warm toned, fiery shades, and the shimmers in here still look amazing. I love wearing Scorched and Dirty Talk. Those are some of my favorite shades to wear out of this one. It is absolutely beautiful. It still performs really, really well. But again, this might be something that I need to focus on to be using more often in the upcoming years, just because I know eventually the formula is going to go off. But so far, it has not. So I will continue to love this palette. I think that this would be my second favorite. Um, behind Stone Vibes, I would say this, this would be my second favorite Urban Decay palette. So this is the Naked Honey, and this is what are the color story in here. I love these yellows. I love these kind of rose golds down here. Everything in this is beautiful. Everything in this works really, really well. So I am happy to have this palette. I don't know if this one is still out there or not, or if it's been discontinued, but if it's out there and it goes on sale, because again, I don't think that any of these palettes are worth the price that they're asking. So I know that I did my video about how you shouldn't buy things on sale just because they're on sale, but if this has been on your radar and it goes within a price you feel comfortable paying, this is definitely a beautiful color story and a great formula if you love shades like these. The next two back here were a little bit of impulse purchases because they did go on sale. This is the Naked Wild West. This one was on my radar and it was kind of on my wish list. And I said, you know what, if it goes on sale, I'll grab it. This is not something that I'm reaching for a whole lot. I have learned to love a pop of blue. And again, the rest of the shades in here are beautiful. I could do without Cowboy Rick, which is this silver shade down here. And I could do without Pony Up because I don't really like gray tone shades. But otherwise, it's good formula. It's what we expect from Urban Decay. It's just, I think that this one missed the mark just a little bit. And with these three down here, they're so similar that we did not need three shades like that, but that is classic Urban Decay. And then the last one back here would be the Naked Ultraviolet, and this was the purple, well, half neutral, half purple. The thing I am disappointed in this is that apart from this one right here, all of these purples are some sort of shimmer or satin. I understand that purples are hard to formulate, but I feel like a brand like Urban Decay that did the, God, what were those palettes called in the past that were the like vibrant colors? Like they've done purples before, but they could not give us a purple matte in this palette. This one right here, Euphoric, a lot of times I'll use that. As, it's a satin. I'll use that as kind of like a matte to build up something in the crease. But overall, I feel like we really are missing a purple matte in this palette, but I like the shades over here. Again, I, I feel like we don't need shades like this in these palettes. Like this is wasted and typically they're not um, mattes. These are like satin shades. And so it doesn't really look good kind of used to blend things out because it does have a sheen to it. So. I feel like, and again, I know that brands do that because maybe the person buying this palette doesn't have a big collection of the rest of the shades, but that one I feel like, again, Urban Decay does this where they give us a bunch of light shades, but this one was a little bit of an impulse purchase. I love purples, but I could have done without this one in my collection. You guys might see some palettes sticking out back here. And these ones are just empty Z palettes. Oh, as I hit everything in my drawer, these are my empty lethal palettes. And you guys will see, or if you watched um, 
my most recent palette ranking video that the palettes that I bought in 2023, you guys would have seen that I combined my two lethal palettes together. So I just have the empty palettes that came with the originals. I just have those tucked back in the back here. So let me put those back without making a huge mess. And then we have these two palettes off to the side here. These are my two ABH palettes. And so we have Sultry and Norvina. So with Norvina, this is our color story right here. Again, this is beautiful. This is probably a palette that I could eventually retire, or this is a palette that I would deconstruct and I would just keep the top row. Um, maybe getting rid of drama, that's not really the best shade, but I could see myself just keeping these shimmers because that is where this palette sticks out. And that's where this palette, again, no pun intended, but this is where this palette shines is those shimmers. But the rest of the mattes I could do without. Maybe keeping incense because it's a good crease shade, but everything else I could do away with. And then there is Sultry. I ended up getting this on the second time around when they re-released it. Or was this one? Sorry, there's a dog hair stuck in the glitters. But no, I think I found this one on base when they had discontinued it and they sell ABH on military bases. And of course, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are not shopping for makeup on military bases. And so I was able to find one of these like six months after it was discontinued, I was able to find one. So this is what the inside of this color story looks like. Again, beautiful. This one I probably would keep and only maybe get rid of these two shades here, even though every time I do a look with these four shades down here, I love the look, but this is not something that I'm always reaching for, but if you want like a sultry, sexy, smoky eye, these four shades down here are definitely going to give it to you, but definitely I love the shimmers in here. It has nice staple mattes, but this is another one I could, C deconstructing and keeping what I would use. But I think I mentioned in my palette roundup video that I am trying really hard to not go with my instinct to depot a lot of palettes. I know that like in six months or a year, I'm really gonna be disappointed that I depotted stuff. So I'm trying to keep everything together for right now. But this is everything that is in this drawer. This is more of my mainstream drawer. But let me go ahead and reposition my camera and I'll show you guys what is up on my shelves. This is as tall as my tripod goes, and so I'm going to be kind of shooting up a little bit, but this is one of my shelves that I have more of the acrylic dividers, and this is where I keep my Natasha Denona mid-size palettes, and then also I do have Metropolis up here. So we will start from the very top. I do have these in order of which they were released. And so we have the first one up here, which will be, I always forget if this one is Sunrise or Sunset. This is Sunrise, and I have to try to get my positioning right, because these are reflective. Oh, so you see my camera, you see my ring light, but this is Sunrise, and this is what the inside of this palette looks like. Beautiful oranges and pinks and yellows. I really do love doing the sunset eyes out of this one and so I do really enjoy this palette. The shade Aster over here which is this purple one is absolutely gorgeous. Next one up we have the Love palette and again this one is reflective but this is our front of this packaging and then our inside color story is our pinks and purples. So again beautiful beautiful color story absolutely love this one and as much as i don't love the silver in the sultry palette the silver in this one is actually very very special so i do love this one and the cream to powder in this one is actually very very nice as well so i probably need to reach for this one a little bit more in february to get some use maybe i'll do a valentine look with this palette not that I'm doing anything special for Valentine's Day, but again, just to have a beautiful pink look, I would love to do that. 
So next one is we have our bronze palette. So this is our packaging on the front. And if you are wondering about how I do my camera setup, hello, you see ring light camera and my big old microphone on the top. So that is the front of our packaging. And then the inside, as you would guess by the name, is the is a bronze color. So beautiful. And I actually kind of like how this one has like your staple mats to set up a look and then just some beautiful shimmers. A lot of these looks do turn out very similar just because the tones in here are very, very similar, but you can go a little bit more gold, a little bit more red, a little bit more copper. So you do have some variety in there as well. So I love this one and the cream to powder up top, which is deep dive. It's a beautiful cream to powder. So I do like the cream to powder in this one as well. So next up is the Glam palette. And again, very reflective, but that is our packaging right there. And then I'll show you our inside. This one I got, you will see me without any makeup on. Hello. This one, I actually did get the creepy lid to stop squeaking. So that was an accomplishment. But this is what our color story is looking like. If I can get it in frame, there we go. So very, very, a little bit more cool toned and neutral. I actually wore this palette today. We had a meeting with an attorney. And so I didn't want to do something with crazy colors. And this really did fit the bill. So I had fun playing with this palette today but I washed four dogs whenever we got home, so I took a shower, so I am makeup free right now. Hopefully Erin that put on some makeup has done a intro and outro for this video, but this is the Glam palette. Next up we have the Retro palette, so a little bit less reflective, but you can still see my setup in there. Just a light pink color on this packaging, and then this is our color story on the inside. Absolutely beautiful. I wish that this would have matched the um, mini retro a little bit better, but you know, we, we can't always get what we want. This is what Natasha wanted to do. I do like the cream to powders in this one as well. I think they blend really, really great. And this is where she started this new formula, which is this one in the middle. She started giving us a little bit more of the sparkle and pizzazz in that new formula. This one here was the little bit of the flop, and this is the Zendo palette. And again, you get to see my setup. Let me mute my computer so my emails coming in don't make a bunch of noise. But this is our setup on the inside. So definitely, it's a little bit of a different color story. Again, it does not reflect to me the mini Zendo, but again, it is her vision, it's her brand. So this one here, I do have some difficulty with some of these shades and some of the cream to powders in this one, but I think that the actually the, what I like the best about this palette is the blues and greens, which is kind of surprising, but I think that those are absolutely beautiful shades in this palette. Oh, my arm is getting tired from holding these up. This is our pastel palette, so a nice little pastel ombre on the packaging. And then this is the inside. Again, it's a, it's a great color story. I think I pointed out when I was doing another palette ranking that the red kind of seems out of place, that I probably would have selected something, again, a little bit more pastel to go in the place of that red. But I actually really do enjoy reaching for the blues and the greens in this palette, and it is very, very beautiful. Lots of cream to powders in here, and again, they work really, really well. So I actually have a lot of fun with this, and this is going to be a palette I need to work on probably around Easter time just to get those fun Easter egg type looks. Now, of course, this one is not necessarily going in the order when, in which she released things, but that's just how I keep them. But this is the Metropolis palette. And so this is what? Is this 28 shades? So a little bit different of a setup, but these are also the same size as the mid-size shades. I wish she did more palettes like this, um, 
instead of her big palettes like the green brown and things like that so this is what this one looks like absolutely stunning i love the oranges and the coppers and the greens definitely right up my alley and i really do also love the cream to powders in this one these two blues right here make really good liners in that cream to powder formula next up we have the my dream palette so this is our packaging on the outside. She tried this splatter design, which I actually am a huge fan of. And then this is the inside of the palette. I just got done using this in a no pan left behind challenge. And so I got to use these shades again and really had fun with this one over here. And of course the duo chrome right there. Let's see, yes, yeah, so you can see it goes to green to red so that is our shift on that one but this is a beautiful palette i love the neutrals in here and this is kind of a staple that i would be happy to have this palette as probably my only palette if i didn't love makeup as much as i do i'd be happy to have that as my only palette but our next one is the retro glam and we're back to a little bit of reflective packaging but this is a little bit different where she has a design and then it's kind of encased behind the plastic it gives it a little bit of a 3d effect and then this is the color story on the inside the only thing that i'm not thrilled about this one is it does lean a little bit ashy so if you're not careful some of those more pastel Greens can really, really look chalky, even on my complexion, but definitely a cool color story to work with. I love greens, I love pinks, so I do love this one. Just have to be a little bit careful with it. Next one we have is the Yucca palette. So here is our packaging. There we go. Now we got it to focus on the palette, but beautiful kind of it reminds me of like the sunlight coming through the canopy in a jungle and you get the different tones of sunlight on the ground, which makes sense because yucca is a tropical plant. So this is the inside. Again, beautiful. This just reminds me of just a jungle kind of color story. I love the deeper greens. The shimmers in, in here are very, very impactful. And actually, as I'm looking at this shade up here, I'm seeing it kind of look pink from my angle. So yeah, there, you can see it look pink there and look more, I don't know, goldy bronze from the front. So beautiful, beautiful shades. Love this palette. So happy to have it. And our last one, and I'm happy about that because my arm is getting tired of holding these up, but this is the Natasha I Need a Nude. She went back to this packaging that kind of has the 3D effect with the plastic kind of overlay. And then this is what we look like. Oh no, is this one going to be a squeak or two? Maybe not. But this is what our color story is looking like on the inside. Again, beautiful with those different kind of shimmer formulas, giving us a little bit more impact. Definitely, let me see if I can open it and get the light to catch a little bit more on those shades. Very beautiful, very metallic. Love these. You can set up a really good look with these mattes, and any of these shimmers are going to look beautiful. So happy to have this one. And I'm probably going to say it a million times, but I am so looking forward to when she does a mid-size gold palette. So you guys can probably see this shelf right up here with more of my indie shades. So let me adjust my camera one more time and we'll go over what's on this shelf. All right, the amount of maneuvering I had to do to make this shot work, but this is pretty much four and a half feet up in the air. <laughs> so I do have um, an acrylic shelf here and one up above. I do have a couple of figures up there, which I might end up showing whenever I do a full vanity tour, just so you guys can see what's actually on the shelves behind me. But I have a John Wick figure and also a Kylo Ren figure over here. But maybe I'll introduce you to them during my vanity tour. But up here, 
I have more of my indie palettes. I have some of my smaller palettes that are maybe a longer format. So they're a little bit awkward to fit in different places in my collection. And then Busy Art, ColourPop, and some more Z palettes. Let me start over here on this far side. And so I do have the Tati Beauty Volume 1 palette. And my arm is going to get extremely tired holding these up. But this is what the inside of this palette looks like. Just our, you know, our rose. She did the matte, the sequin, the metallic, and then the glitters. I'm curious what Tati's going to do when she comes out with stuff. She keeps teasing that Tati Beauty might come back. But she does have a beautiful formula with these eyeshadows. It's just a big palette. So it fits best right up here. I have a Z palette from Give Me Glow, but this is not Give Me Glow shadows. This is just one of their Z palettes. But in here I do have Sydney Grace, ColourPop, and Makeup Geek shades. So definitely this is my color story that you guys have probably seen repeated with the greens, the purples, the pinks, the earthy tones. This is the color story that I absolutely love. So this is a palette that I ended up putting together for myself. All right, I ended up crawling up onto my desk because I cannot hold my arm up this high all the time. So I do have another Z palette here. This is just one that I ordered off of Amazon, but inside this Z palette, I do have the remnants of the ColourPop So Jaded palette. And so these are just the shades that I loved. And so I took them out of the original packaging because it was a big palette and I put them in here. Again, earthy tones, greens, purples, warm colors. Love this one to pieces. And then I have some of my Star Wars stickers up there because the mirror on this palette did end up breaking. So this is the remnants of So Jaded. This one is another one of the Gimme Glow uh, Magnetic Palettes. And then this is the one with all of my lethal shades in it that I showed you guys in my palette ranking. So that's what the inside of this one looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you guys can probably see a theme in the palettes that I create for myself. Pinks, greens, warm tones, purples, burgundies. These are the shades that I love. Then next up here, I have my Cosmic Beauty Muse palette. So this is our outside packaging. Beautiful. And then our inside color story. Again, are we seeing a theme <laughs> with the greens and the purples and the pinks? It's easy to see the color stories that I enjoy. I have two more lethal palettes, and so I have the Night Flower, which is this beautiful purple and blue color story here. Absolutely gorgeous. Love all of them. And then the Sister and Companion palette is the Wild Flower, which is right here next to it. And here's this color story. Very springy, very beautiful. Again, very Easter egg, so I want to be able to use this one in the spring. Oh, I have a very upset puppy in the hallway. We have another Cosmic Brushes palette, and this is the Gothic. It is black on black packaging, but you can see that the script is shiny. But this is our purple palette so absolutely gorgeous love this one beautiful beautiful what a stunning formula the next indie brand that i have is glamanatrix and this is the rich romantic palette so this is what our outside is looking like beautiful kind of faux leather material and then this is our inside color story. I also like that we have these smaller pans in here. 
but you guys can see purples, greens, beautiful shimmers. It's like, you know, it's like I'm drawn to a particular color story or something. And I guess maybe this can show me that I have a ton of the same color story over and over and over again. I'm going to take down both of my Odin's Eye palettes just because I have to take them out of their sleeves. But this is where I keep both of them. So we'll go over the Halloween one first. So this is, ooh, let me center myself. So this is the Trick or Treat palette. This is the collab with Angie. Absolutely stunning packaging. And this was my number one palette from 2023 when I did my ranking. So that's our color story, absolutely beautiful. Again, with the greens and burgundies and warm tones. Again, it's like I have a type. Then we have the Odin's Eye Merry Christmas palette. Beautiful packaging as always. I do like this format of the 16 pan palettes, but oh, I almost dropped it. But here is warm tones, burgundies and greens. I'm starting to see a trend and actually seeing all my palettes kind of back to back with each other. Again, it's pointing out to me that unless there's a palette that comes out that has a very unique color story or a palette that comes out that just, I mean, let's be honest, if I'm collecting all of them, like the Natasha Denona ones, I probably don't need it. But this is my Pan That palette for the year. So this is my ColourPop It's My Pleasure. And this is what the inside of this one is looking like right there. Beautiful color story. I wore this one this week. And I did a look with Mr. Sandman, which is a beautiful shade. But that's that one. I'm also going to go ahead and pull down all four of my minis from Natasha Denona. And we'll go through those. So since they have clear tops on them, I'll go ahead and just open them up right away. So this is the Mini Love. Beautiful purples and pinks. Oh God. Now seeing all these, I really want to reach for them. This is the Mini Gold. And again, if she does a mid-size gold, I'm okay if it looks like the large gold palette, but I mean, give us some of these beautiful greens. I mean, come on. Have you seen a more perfect palette than that? But this one is the mini retro. Again, I love the taupey greens, absolutely beautiful shades. And then the last mini that I have is the mini Zendo. And again, I love the green in this palette. So beautiful. There's something just so muted and sophisticated about this palette that, again, is not in the mid-size Zendo. I can put those back up there. Next to it, I do have the Pat McGrath and Star Wars. This is the Darth Vader palette. It's actually called Sith Seduction. And so it just has five shimmer shades to it, darker shades that, I mean, I'm, they're very, very beautiful. I also, if you guys have noticed, I don't take the plastic off my mirrors if I can help it. I know that that's like a satisfying part that people love doing but I do not want to take the plastic off my mirrors. Um, next one I have is the ColourPop and Winnie the Pooh Sweet As Can Be palette. I bought this one again for nostalgia. I grew up with my mom reading Winnie the Pooh to me, but also this color story is right up my alley. Again, greens and pinks and burgundies and warm tones. Who would have thought? Beautiful palette though, and I love the hexagon shape of the pans in that one. In this container right here, I'm gonna just pull all of my Viseart palettes so I can go through them, but I do have four. This is one of the Theory palettes, and this is in the Nuance colorway. 
This does have six pans in it. They are all shimmers. And this is what our color story is looking like. You guys can see which shade I reach for the most, this beautiful red shade. That shade makes my eyes look so blue. I absolutely love it. Is that, there we go. Now the camera's actually focusing on the shades. Beautiful, beautiful shimmer palette. I do use this palette as a whole. Some of these are a little bit more satin, so I can use them in the crease. This is the Petite Pro Apricot Palette. And so this has our eight shades on the inside. And again, just Viseart has such a beautiful formula. I do kind of have the urge to depot all of these and put all of my Viseart shades in a palette together, but definitely I would want to number them and label them so I would know how to get them back in their original palettes. We have one of the, this is one of the edits. So this is the Paris edit, this beautiful pink color. And on the inside, we have a 12 pan palette. And this is our color story. Again, beautiful pinks and burgundies. Absolutely stunning. Viseart has such an amazing formula and it took a lot of willpower for me not to buy more palettes during their sale in Black Friday. My last busy art palette is the Rosé Edit palette. Again, this is a 12 pan, but a little bit more of a rosy and warm tone color story. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Even though I don't have the pan on a whole lot of shades, I hope that you guys have kind of noticed that I get use out of my palettes. None of my palettes, quote unquote, go to waste. I do use every single one in my collection. Um, these are all ColourPop, so let me bring these down. These are my nine pans from ColourPop. So I do have the C3PO, which is just this beautiful golden color story. Oh, sounds like Jane is waking up a little bit. Again, the doggies had baths today, so he's all worn out and tuckered out from it. But beautiful gold color story. Then we have the Mandalorian palette. This one is not my favorite. I think when I did my palette um, ranking about how I, if I had to get rid of 10 palettes, this would be one on the chopping block. Even though every time I use it, I do enjoy the look. It's just everything turns very dark. So that is the Mandalorian palette. Then we have the Child palette with Mr. Grogu on the front and a beautiful green color story on the inside. Do love me some greens. So enjoy this palette quite a bit. I do have the ColourPop in a trance, beautiful pastel palette. So that middle shade came out of So Jaded. I did get rid of the pressed glitter in this one. And so this is the palette now. Beautiful pinks and blues and purples. And then I just have a Z palette from ColourPop. And this has the remnants of my give it to me straight. I did go ahead and replace that cream color shade. That is another shade from the So Jaded palette. And so I just put a new cream colored shade into this palette as well. We'll put those back up. And then the last two that I'm going to reach for are both Z palettes and we will go through those. This is another one of the Gimme Glow Z palettes. This is one of their 12 pans. This one is called Mr. Grinch because of the color and it came out during their Christmas collection. I love this. And then this is the color story on the inside. These are just depotted color pop, um, probably some pure cosmetics in there, maybe a makeup geek one or two. And then the two square pans are from all of our cosmetics. So these are just singles and depotted shades that I had laying around. 
And then this one here is another ColourPop 12 pan. And this one is my purple palette. So I kind of feel like I need one more shade to complete this, but I do not need to buy any more single shadows. And so this is just all of my purple singles that I have. And so that is the last palette in my collection. Let me put these back up here. And that is my top row of Indie and ColourPop. Alrighty, so that was all of my palettes. Give or take, I should have 56, 57 palettes up there. I have combined a few palettes together of my single shades, and I did create another 12 pan palette that is in the um, the Mr. Grinch palette from Give Me Glow. That one I recently created, but I have not added that to my inventory yet. So like I said, give or take, 56, 57 palettes that I have up on my shelves. And doing this video was a very big eye opener for me to see that I do have a color story that I gravitate towards, which is of course the earthy tones, the greens, pinks, purples, mauves, um, burgundies, like that kind of thing. Definitely I lean towards that. So that kind of tells me that I probably don't need to bring any more palettes into my collection with that color story unless I'm willing to let go of some as well. But I do have 12 single potted shadows plus so 11 single potted shadows plus one liquid shadow in this little container right here. So I'll go ahead and I'll run through these real quick and that will wrap up my eyeshadow collection video. So this is actually the super shock that I thought that I was going to declutter last year and because it was completely dried out, but I figured I'd give it a little bit more of a try and I just repressed it today. This is actually the shade that I have on my eyes today, but I did repress it, so I'm trying not to turn it upside down, but this is in Birthday Girl, and this is what it's looking like right now. It had a huge pan on it, and again, it was completely dried out. Maybe I'll go into, or I'll just tell you guys right now, I sharpened one of my shadow sticks that has a very similar color, so I took the sharpenings of the shadow stick plus this, and then like, three drops of vitamin E oil and I mixed it together and then I repressed it and actually it worked really really well. I'm curious how long this will last but definitely this is as firmly pressed as I could get it but not something that I would feel comfortable turning upside down. I feel like I would lose a lot of that product. So that was the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Birthday Girl. The next one here is in Birthday Cake. And this one has a nice size pan on it as well. It is a beautiful, again, this is the glitter formula, which I really enjoy. And I don't know if ColourPop does a whole lot of these glitter formulas where it actually has a really nice base color to it. So I really enjoy this one, but this one is also getting dry. This is from their birthday collection from like 2017. So I can understand why these would be getting old and dried out. This one is in sequin. Again, this is the same birthday collection, a beautiful copper shade. I mean, they're all gonna be flashing because they are very metallic, but that's that one. This is moving on to some of my newer Super Shocks. So this one is in Aster. Gosh, these are reflective, but a beautiful coppery shade. I got this one to kind of replace some of these older ones but there's something about the formula of the 2017 birthday collection that I've not been able to find in a Super Shock since. And this next one is in Party of Five. This is a beautiful purple shade, but again, they're so reflective, but that's what that one's looking like. These ones are only a few years old, so they are still very much um, moist. They're still creamy, we'll put it that way. This one is in Sail Away. This was part of one of their um, collections, but again, it's just a beautiful gold shade with lots of shimmer in it. Let me see. This one's drying out a little bit. See if you guys can even see. No, this one is not as impactful as I 
thought it was going to be. So actually this is one that I would consider decluttering just because of the shade and the formula of it. I have two more Super Shocks. They're both from the Disney Princess Collection. This one is Colors of the Wind. Yes, and so this is a beautiful gold color and this is for Pocahontas. Beautiful. I loved these. I probably, I'll tell myself that I wish I had gotten the whole set, but really the way that I am not using my Super Shocks as much as I should probably means I didn't need all of them. This one is How Far I'll Go. So this is the Moana one. It has the conch shell on the packaging and then it's this more cool toned shade. It probably is pulling a little bit more pink, but it is very, very cool toned. So that is How Far I'll Go. And really, I mean, you guys see me turning them sideways because I'm trying to get the true colors because if I put them straight on, all you're seeing is that beautiful metallic reflection. So those are all of my Super Shocks. And then I do have the three melted chromes from Essence. So this pinky one, this one is the Zinc About You. Show that one up close. It is a more cool tone pinky taupe. So that one is beautiful. These ones are still extremely creamy and they are not dried out at all. This one is Golden Crown. So a more golden shade. And then the last one is Warm Bronze. And again, it's exactly that. It is a warm bronze shade. These are absolutely gorgeous. They do look like just molten liquid metal on your eyes and in a swatch. I mean, just look at that beautiful, pure pigment. Absolutely love it. Wiping those on the pants. And then the one liquid shadow that I have is from Cover Effects, and this is in Soleil. This one might be drying out a little bit. This one's a little bit more sheer than some of my other ones. I like kind of wearing this as a base color, and I'll show it right there. I mean, it's very beautiful, very, very shimmery and impactful. So it catches the light beautifully, but this one, I like to lay this one down and then pack another shade that might be a little bit more chunky over top of it. And it really does help that chunky shade just kind of set. But that is all of my single potted and liquid shadows. And that is my entire eyeshadow collection. I hope that you guys really enjoyed getting a peek into my drawers and my organization. Coming up in March also, I will have my vanity tours. And so you'll be able to see how I organize the rest of my makeup and just my beauty stuff in my drawers behind me. I'll give you guys a peek into my makeup fridge back there and then the rest of the shelves and kind of the backdrop that you guys see behind me, I'll kind of give a behind the scenes of what this whole area looks like. Do you guys own any of these palettes? Are any of them on your wish list? Let me know how you guys are doing with your eyeshadow collections and your eyeshadow purchasing. Tell me if there's anything that is really tempting you right now. Ensley Rain just released photos of the Groovy Garden palette. And while, again, these are shades that I really do love, doing this video made me realize that I already have every single shade in there. Plus, I probably have some special indie shades that would make up for the special shades in this palette. And so for only having one row of special shades, I don't need all those mats because I already have those mats in my collection. So this video was actually a great kind of experiment type of mindful exercise for me to do. So thank you for asking me to do this video. It really was helpful to me. I hope that it was at least a little bit entertaining for you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and sign off and take care of the puppy dogs, get some dinner going, wash my face off for the day and start getting ready to relax for the evening. But I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Oh, I almost forgot, do all the things, hit the thumbs up on this video, make sure to subscribe for more 
project panning, conscious consumerism, beauty budgeting, eyeshadow, all of that jazz. Make sure to subscribe for that. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you guys are doing. I love our conversations in the comment section. But let me get back to saying good night to everybody. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will catch you in my next one.